This month on Love Worth Finding, God granted Solomon's request for wisdom, and along with that came great wealth and honor. What is it that you're seeking? Would you like to discover what Solomon learned about how to get the most out of life? Then join us this month as Adrian Rogers leads a series through the book of Proverbs and find God's way to health, wealth, and wisdom on Love Worth Finding. Welcome to Love Worth Finding with pastor, teacher, and author Adrian Rogers, reaching out with God's love, bringing people to Christ, touching lives around the world, and helping you find the answers you need today. Join us as we prepare to open God's Word and discover how your life can be changed forever by His great love worth finding. I 
don't know about tomorrow. It may bring me poverty. song and how beautifully done. I praise God for that. Would you find the book of Proverbs? We're going to be in the book of Proverbs all together this morning, so get it, lay it out in your lap, and uh, study these verses with me. We're talking today about raising kids that count. One of my life verses from the book of Psalms is this, the generation of the upright shall be blessed. And I have held God to that promise that God will bless my children, my chief desire for my kids is not that they be wealthy, not that they be famous, uh, not that they always be praised or whatever, but that they will love the Lord Jesus Christ and count in his cause kids that will count for God. Now, may I ask you a question? How would you like to have a gifted child? Now, I know all of us think our children are gifted, especially our grandchildren, but how would you like to have a gifted child? Well, that's, that's a doable thing. You just make the gifts. I want to talk to you today about some gifts that you can give to your children. The book of Proverbs tells us about these gifts, so let me mention seven of them if you'd like to have a gifted child, okay? If you'd like to have a kid that counts or kids that count, that will amount to something. The first thing you ought to give them is you need to give them an example. Give to them an example. Notice in Proverbs chapter 1, verses 7 through 9, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Now, if they don't learn to respect God, uh, they're not going to have a modicum of genuine knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace under thy head, 
and chains about thy neck. Now, kids, he's not talking about an iron chain to drag you around with. He's talking about a gold chain that would be something beautiful. And then Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 7, the just man walks in his integrity, his children are blessed after him. Now, I'm going to tell you something, folks. Your kids are going to learn more from your lifestyle than they're going to learn from your words. You need to give to them a godly example. Now, if that makes you nervous, let me tell you something. You don't have to pretend perfection. You know you're not perfect, and I've got news for you. They already know you're not perfect. And so if you try to pretend per perfection, uh, you're going to come across as a phony. Your kids don't want to know that you're perfect. They want to know that you're real. Your kids want to know that you are genuine. They're going to be watching you to see how you handle your mess-ups. Do you ever mess up? Nod your head. And not a parent here doesn't mess up. I heard about a man one time who was going to rob a bank. He was an old farmer. couldn't uh, pay for his uh, food and seed and everything else. His wife was sick. His kids needed tuition. He decided the only thing he could do is rob a bank. <laughs> he never robbed a bank, but he studied about it, thought he'd know what to do. So he, uh, he got him a bag, got him a rusty old gun, wrote a note, and... Uh, wrote on there, uh, don't mess with me, this is a stick up, give me all your money. And uh, he went to the teller and uh, got all confused and handed the teller the gun, pointed the bag at her and, and said, uh, don't stick with me, this is a mess up. <laughs> well, a lot of us just mess up. We just mess up. And, and our kids want to know, how do, how do you handle your mess-ups? How do you handle your failures? How do you handle your problems? That will be better to them than your phony perfectionism. Uh, share with your kids. Give them an example. You know the problem with this, <laughs> the real problem, is about the time you experience being a parent, you're out of a job. Isn't that right? And so the two hardest times, I guess, of life are middle age and teenage, and somehow God uh, puts them together. Uh, but give your kids an example. Your kids are going to learn more from your example than actually from your words. I found out when I was a grown man, I was mispronouncing a word over and over again. I had done it all of my life. And I just constantly mispronounced and then one time I was at home with my dear precious mother and I listened to her and she said the same word the wrong way. Now I listened to my brother, he said the same word the wrong way. I listened to my sister, she said the same word the wrong way. And I realized my dear sweet sainted old mother had infected us with a bad word. Not, not an ugly word, just just. By, by being there and absorbing a word as a child, I heard her say this word, not an ugly word, just simply a very common word that she mispronounced. Now, folks, we owe to our children an example. Did you know there are a lot of things that they can't learn any other way? They can't really learn in Sunday school. They can't learn in public school. They've got to be demonstrated. Now, what are we interested in with our kids? Well, sports, grades, physical health, popularity, ability. But who is teaching them? Character. Let me read some character traits to you. Contentment. Now, they're not going to go to school and earn contentment 101. I mean, they don't get that in college. Courage, courtesy, discernment, fairness, friendliness, generosity, gentleness, Helpfulness, honesty, uh, humility, kindness, obedience, orderliness, patience, persistence, self-control, tact, thankfulness, tidiness, wisdom. Where are they going to learn these things? These things are not so much taught as they are caught. We owe to our kids an example. Now, number two, not only give to them a godly example, but give to them unconditional love. Look in Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. Hear ye children the, the instruction of a father, 
and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. Yes, that's fine, good doctrine, teaching, law, yes. But notice this, for I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. You know, we need to give to our kids love that is absolutely, totally unconditional. I've noticed that uh, men who had fathers who did not love them do not really know how to give love to their kids. They have to be taught. And we have to have a generation of men now who are going to mentor some other men who never had a father to actually give them love and to show them unconditional love. We have to break that cycle. Now, unconditional love doesn't mean that you give to a child everything he wants. That's not really love at all. True love is not giving to someone what they want. It's giving to someone what they need. But there must be unconditional acceptance regardless of the child's misbehavior. I may not accept what you do, but I accept you. They need to know that enough so that when they are in trouble, when they do misbehave, they'll still come to you. They'll still come. They won't be afraid to come to you. Now, if they don't have a sense that my dad loves me no matter what I do, my mom loves me no matter what I do, they're not going to share their mess ups with you. At, there, there needs to be that unconditional love. And you know, that love not, needs not to be merely in words, but it, it has to have some physical attachments to it. We have to be constantly touching them and hugging them and holding them. Now, your big old teenage boy, he'll act like he doesn't want that. But do it anyway. It's biblical. Luke chapter 15 and verse 20. When the prodigal son comes home, his father sees him, falls on his neck, hugs him, and kisses him. I saw a bumper sticker that said, kids need hugs, not drugs. They need somebody to physically teach them about this love that that is a very physical thing. Uh, we have a generation of kids today who associate physical touching with uh, sexual intimacy. They, they need to see beyond this. They need to be touched affectionately and supportively and playfully and tenderly. If they don't get that, they're not going to feel your sense of true love. Let your kids see you and your wife, you and your husband, uh, hugging one another, not just simply romantically. But let them learn how to be touched. Charles Swindoll, whom we all love, wrote this. I want you to listen to it. Many a young woman who opts for immoral sexual relationships does so because she can scarcely remember a time when her father so much as touched her unaffectionate dads without wishing to do so can trigger a daughter's promiscuity. All of this leads me to write with a great deal of passion, dads, don't hold back your affection. Demonstrate your feelings of love and affection to both sons and daughters and don't stop once they reach adolescence. They long for your affirmation and appreciation. They will love you for it. More importantly, they will emulate your example when God gives them their own family. Love them unconditionally. Show it by touching. Show it by sympathy. When they have their problems, and friend, they have their problems. Now, you may think that the problems the kids have are not big problems compared to your problems. They're big to the kid, and that's what matters. And uh, uh, cry with them when they hurt. Uh, when uh, their little grade school romances break up. Be concerned about them with all of these things. When a pet dies, do you ever attend a, a funeral for a turtle? Or a dog? We've had some of those at our homes. And I know what it is to hold a grown daughter in my arms and, and, and literally cry with her. As she cries, show them sympathy. And, and the point I'm trying to make is this, that not only do you need to give them an example, you need to give to them un.
unconditional love. Got it? Say got it. Okay, now, number three, you need to give to them constant encouragement. Constant encouragement. Listen to verse 21. My son, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely and thy foot shall not stumble. Do you hear the encouragement here? When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Now here's the wisest man who lived uh, uh, purely human outside the Lord Jesus, who was Solomon. And can you see the sense in which he's talking to his son and who is encouraging his son? You bless your children with encouragement. When, when you re regularly encourage a child, what you're doing is giving to that child confidence. And confidence is so needed. What you're really doing is blessing the child. Over and over again, we ask our Heavenly Father what? What is the one thing we probably say more than anything else when we pray to our Heavenly Father? Oh, God, bless me. God, bless me. You want your Heavenly Father to bless you. I'm telling you, your child needs a blessing from his earthly father. And that blessing is encouragement. Somebody gave me a house plant. I put it in my study. It was beautiful for about a week and a half. And then I looked over at it and it was doing this. I thought, what happened to my plant? I went and got a styrofoam cup and poured about three or four cups of water on it. And I'm telling you, in several hours, that plant was just like this. Encouragement is to a child what water is to a dehydrated plant. Encourage them. Rather than trying to catch them doing something wrong, try to catch them doing something right. Let your speech not always be negative. Let it be positive. Now, I want to tell you something. There is a difference between praise and encouragement. A lot of us think we're encouraging a child when we're praising a child, and we may really be discouraging a child by praise. Let me show you the difference between praise and encouragement. Praise said, son, you got all A's. I'm proud of you. Our son, oh boy, you really did great on in the game. We would have lost the game had it not been for you. Son, you're really a great athlete, and you're praising. What are you saying to that child, really? You're saying, you know, my dad is really proud of me because of what I do. Now, suppose sometimes he doesn't do so well. Suppose sometimes he does not achieve. Suppose he doesn't make straight A's. Now, what does that say to his mind? You see, that's praise. What is encouragement? Encouragement might be say, say, son, uh, we didn't win the game. But son, I saw you were really trying. Thank you, son, for that. Well, you didn't make straight A's. I'll tell you one thing you have done. I saw you study. You did your homework. And I'm grateful for that. I really believe that you tried as best you know how. Do you see the difference? It may be a subtle thing. But, but learn to encourage these kids. Encouragement says, I love you. I, I'm grateful for you. Not necessarily because you achieved, but because of who you are. Bill Glass was a great football player in my generation. Now is a prison evangelist and is a, a good friend. Bill Glass goes into prisons. And many times you'll ask those prisoners a question like this. How many of you... How many of you had a father who said to you, you will never amount to anything? One of these days, you're going to end up in prison. Almost every one of them lifted his hand. Almost every one. You'll never amount to anything. One of these days, you're going to end up in prison. Friend, give them an example. Give them unconditional love. Give them encouragement. Now it's time to give them wise instruction. Look in Proverbs 2, verses 1 through 7. Here's the instruction. Listen to it. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine, thine heart to understanding, 
Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lift, liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her, that is, knowledge, as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, and out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous, and he is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. And then the corresponding passage, uh, Proverbs 22, verse 6, Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he'll not depart from it. Now, we give them wise instruction. But wise instruction is always joined to training. By the way, when your children are little, it's always good to have family worship, to start the day with the Word of God. Now, my wife and I have tried all kinds of things with our kids for family worship. I want to give you one of the simplest, easiest forms of family worship. I don't know why I didn't discover it a long time ago. It is such a blessing. We just let somebody choose a proper one little children old enough to read, or a grown child, choose a proverb. And they take the Bible and choose a proverb. They can do it at random, or at, like sometimes they do, a, a book of proverbs is basically the same as the number of days in the month. Choose a proverb from that particular day. If it's the seventh, choose from the seventh chapter of proverbs. And read a proverb, just one, and let... And let that child explain what he thinks that proverb means. Then everybody else, just talk about it for a few moments. It is so simple. But what, what you're doing when those children are learning those proverbs and having to think about what it means, that is distilled wisdom. That is uh, something that's just a nugget of truth that they can carry with them to school and with work uh, and to work. But what I'm trying to say is give them wise instruction but let that instruction be joined with training. Train up a child. Well, with God's help, you can give your children wise instruction. You can be a godly example. Offer them the right kind of encouragement and help them make a difference in this world. But in order to rely on the strength and wisdom that only God can give, you need to have a relationship with Him. Do you know Him? Have you given your life to Christ? The Bible tells us that all have sinned and we deserve God's judgment. But Jesus paid for our sins with His death on the cross. If you accept Christ's sacrifice for you, repent of your sins and surrender your life to Him, He will come in and make you a new person. Why don't you tell Him right now that you want to be saved? Well, if today you give your life to Christ, we want to send you some materials that will help you grow as a new believer. Simply write and let us know, and we'll send you a New Testament and these helpful booklets. Now, this month, we're featuring the series, God's Way to Health, Wealth, and Wisdom, a study in the book of Proverbs that will open your eyes to the treasures of heaven. Just contact us if you'd like to have this revealing study as part of your personal library. And if you'd like to get a complete copy of today's message, which is not a part of our featured series, just mention the title, Raising Kids That Count, when you contact us. But well, we want to say thanks this month for your financial support by sending you the booklet, God's Way to Health, Wealth, and Wisdom. This companion booklet to our featured series gives you insight into Solomon's life and the success he had by the grace of God. We're grateful for your partnership, so mention the booklet when you send your gift. We're so glad you could be with us today, and we hope you'll tune in next week as we continue to learn about raising kids that count. Join us then for more on how you can help your kids know the joys of a life filled with God's great love worth finding.